thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Gary. And thank you for the invitation to speak. This is a European Arachnus program. It's called Integrated Program because it integrates academia with this one, is it? It integrates academia with various industries. And uh, this shows there is a multinational, four other European companies and six institutions from various uh, EU countries. And basically the project is called Arachnis, which stands for an array of robotic of robots augmenting the kinematics of endoluminal surgery in its widest sense. And in my view, it arose from discussion I had with the chief uh, uh, bioengineering professor in Pisa, Paolo Dario, on what is emerging, the natural orifice transluminal endoscopic surgery, and the single incision laparoscopic surgery cells. And we felt that both these two approaches are performed currently with standard endoscopic or surgical instrumentation slightly modified, but while ad hoc technical solutions uh, are not yet fully developed. And we feel, my, uh, Dario and I feel that we, the, by applying robotics, to these new approaches, notes, and the cells approach, we may make a significant advance in the uh, clinical use of these variant laparoscopic approaches. The f funding is shown here. It's a very expensive program, 14 million uh, by the EU next generation of surgical robotic operating system. Basically, we have two platforms. The first is the uh, intraluminal The first is the intraluminal uh, or intracorporeal, I should say, single incision bimanual robot, which has two arms, which are externally controlled much like the Da Vinci, except the arms are inside. But this is assisted by an array of micro-robots, which are modular, and are inserted and aluminum or intraperitoneally in segments. And they build themselves inside. So they are assembling and reconfigurable micro-robots. And this should, we believe, improve the, or, or facilitate the conduct of various laparoscopic operations carried out by either the single port or the soul's approach. The governance, as in everything European, is very complex, and I don't have time to go through this, but basically it's coordinated from PISA, the CRIM laboratory, by Paolo Dario and myself, and as I said, involves uh, both major companies and institutions. So there is sort of a project manager, a board of partners, etc. This is to fulfill the regulations for the EU Framework 7 and giving these big programs to both industry and academia. The platform one is a robot which enters through an umbilical port which has been developed and with two arms inside. There is also adding or assisting this, uh, the alternative to insert a system, a second port, down to the esophagus to a specially developed cannula, which is smart and multifunctional and I'll show you this in a minute. This is the umbilical port called the endocone, which is used for ordinary uh, single incision laparoscopic surgery. And this is the special esophageal port, which opens up inside the stomach and provides camera lighting 
pressure sensing and can be protruded through the stomach if needed into the peritoneal cavity. So what are the clinical features of platform one? The operating console, in contradistinction to that of the Da Vinci, has an open configuration. It is non-immersive. It is very low bulk and is close to and in fact alongside the operating table and the patient support and the console are being developed as one so that the surgeon now is in the sterile field. This is not telepresence, this, this is the opposite of telepresence. The this, this surgeon will be sterile in sterile gowns and by the patient. The instrumentation has tactile feedback for, for the endo effectors of the main bimanual intracorporeal system. There is a panoramic vision which gives you the, the scene of the whole operative field in addition to at an operating smaller focused sort of 3D image. And there is intraoperative sensing, not only for tactile, but also to provide uh, optical biopsy in case the surgeon encounters the situation uh, of unsuspected tumor. And also tissue chemistry to specifically establish the vascular blood supply, for example, after doing a, a difficult anastomosis. The clinical features of platform two, this is an array of modular reconfigurable self-assembly micro-robots inserted into sort of modules and build themselves automatically inside. And these will be used to retract, to coagulate, the equivalent of instruments really, but performed by robots. The micro-robots can be inserted through the umbilical port or through the esophageal port that I showed you, or both. This is the concept of the display, which is, as I said, open with an autostereoscopic system and additional displays. And this will be moved alongside, and these two units, the patient support and the table are being developed by Imperial College uh, as one unit, as it were. The vision system, as I said before, includes a panoramic camera, which is 2D, and a stereoscopic operating system. This is the first version of the intracorporeal bimanual robot. Uh, the shoulder has external actuation, but the elbow and wrist have internal actuation. And this is hopefully, uh, I don't know if I can bring this right, is an animation of this robot, which has, has been built. Um, Is it possible to do it from your end? It doesn't seem to be working from this. Can you? So this has uh, been built and I'll show you. But to give you an, uh, an idea, so the robot goes through this umbilical port, which is completed. It opens up into two arms inside the inflated abdomen, of course, with positive pressure pneumoperitoneum, and then the two arms, which can be controlled externally to the console by this. And this system will be uh, assisted by the array of micro-robots that I showed you before. Okay? Can we close this now from your end? This is the sort of working platform 
uh, at the moment with one arm being tested. Uh, we don't have time, so I'll skip some of these videos. Um, but this is even with... Uh, even without the sort of motion scaling, it's a very stable robot that will be all introduced through the port that I showed you previously, capable of very fine. And remember, the stability of this will be improved as we add motion scaling through the computer system. But at the moment, it is very stable, uh, the two arms, and it's quite easy to, to uh, use. And in fact, you can even draw with it. As, I, as I'm trying to do here. The micro robot system uh, is its main function as platform two is to assist the main robots and it can be introduced to the scannula which has been developed for Agnes by a separate company which senses also is able to insufflate and to open up as, uh, as two bits, one's insertion, one carrying lights and the other cameras, etc. This is being tested in the porcine stomach and this inside. The scanner will allow the insertion of instruments so that if it's desired to enter transgastrically the peritoneal cavity and have a bimanual approach, this too can be done. These are the modules which form these robots. I'll show you one and not the others. Um, these are self-assembly. The modules, as you can see, are quite small, but they are designed in such a way that they can be joined together in any configuration of up to it. 18 of these components to form the robot inside. And of course they are capable of locomotion as well, as you can see here. And we have tested these inside the stomach, inside the colon, inside the peritoneal cavity. And you can see how they are inserted simply just very quickly using guide wires. And because they have tiny magnets at each end, they automatically link up and can disassemble after. I think I'll have to stop it because time is running. The instruments have sensing for touch and also for optical biopsy, including Raman spectroscopy for the detection of unsuspected cancer. So in conclusion, we feel this is a European new disruptive robotic twin platform technology, uh, driven and orientated by surgical needs exploring new engineering paradigms in miniaturization, reconfigurability, dexterity, intuitive control, a potential high-performance, low-cost EU alternative to the current Da Vinci. We reckon that it would probably cost, once it's completed in a year and a half time, about 250,000 euros, no more, and it's also a platform for investigating and developing means for accurate, local, and aluminal diagnosis and therapy using microsystems technology. Thank you for your attention. And I'm sorry for being late. <laughs>